Good day, uh, everyone, and welcome to our session today. My name is Tem Bangube. Uh, our focus today uh, is on um, transverse waves and longitudinal waves. Uh, it's an interesting section, however, uh, we must note that it's a build-up uh, uh, from the previous session that we did on transverse pulses, uh, which pretty much has to do with a single disturbance uh, in space or in a medium. Now, we're going to be looking at what exactly happens, which is quite interesting, uh, when you have a succession or a repeated disturbance that is being propagated in space. It's a very interesting section. I hope where each and every one of us has a good time on that. Now, let's get right on to it. Right. Okay. Now, if you look on the overview that we have, we have uh, looked at already at the transverse pulses, which had to do with the single disturbances that would uh, take place in a medium and be transmitted through the particles. Now, our focus today is on the transverse waves. I must draw your attention on the fact that pulses uh, has to do with um, a single disturbance in a, in a, in a medium, whereas uh, a wave has to do with a repeated or a succession. So today, our main focus is on the transverse waves as well as longitudinal waves. By the end of the lesson, I think we'll be all be in a position to distinguish between the longitudinal as well as the transverse. Now, there are some similarities. However, there are also differences uh, that we must take note of. Right, just to get us started, uh, let's look at uh, the next slide, which says uh, terminology. I think uh, terminology becomes a very key aspect of each and every lesson because it has to do with the words, uh, the concepts that we shall be looking into. It will be very important for us to understand what uh, 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 terminology we're going to use. So just to get us started, uh, the question says, uh, what do, you, do the following words or terms mean? Transverse wave, emphasis is on the word wave. Remember, it's, 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 it's a continuation from pulses. And also, frequency, period, in phase, wavelength. Uh, for now, I'll give you three minutes to attempt each and every one of those uh, attempts. Then uh, we'll give feedback as a collective and take it from there. Three minutes, there we go, guys. Thank you.
Hello and welcome back, guys. Uh, after our short uh, attempt on the few questions that I, I gave to you, uh, now I just want us to go through each and one of those uh, terms so that, remember, we said uh, terminology is very key in terms of uh, understanding the concepts that we shall be dealing with uh, in this section. Now let's get right on to it. Right. Okay. Okay. The first term uh, that you have there is, or the first word is transverse wave, right? The term transverse, we have interacted with it uh, before when we looked at transverse pulses. One of the key things that we discussed as far as a transverse pulse is concerned is that the disturbance of the medium is perpendicular to the direction of motion of the pulse. And remember, perpendicular, it means it's at 90 degrees at a right angle. So remember, the difference between a wave and a pulse is that when you talk of a wave, it is a repeated or a succession of disturbances that uh, take place during uh, 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 a disturbance which, which occurs in a medium. So a transverse wave is a series, a series of pulses in which the disturbance Okay. The disturbance um, is um, perpendicular. Perpendicular, the other word for perpendicular is um, a, at right angles. Okay, perpendicular uh, to the direction of motion. To the direction of motion of the wave. Remember now we're going to say it's a wave because it's a repeated a series. Series, it means one after the other. Um, to, to perpendicular to the direction of motion of the wave. Okay, there we go. So the key words uh, in this case uh, is it's a series of pulses. So series of pulses says to us it's a repeated disturbance that take place in a medium. Very key, right? Um, then the next one has to do with frequency. Surely the word uh, frequency is being, we use it quite a, a lot in our everyday uh, 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 home situation, you know, how frequent or how often you go to town. Now, think of it this way. If we talk of uh, a single disturbance that occurs in space, then uh, now we're going to uh, uh, look at it in terms of uh, if it is that disturbance is repeated continuously, uh, consistently, then we, we talk of uh, our frequency. So remember, as in other words, frequency says to us that uh, the number of pulses uh, that we generate per second. So frequency is number of pulses of complete pulses Right, because remember, it's a series. Series, it means it's repeated. Right, number of complete pulses per second. Number of complete pulses per second. Um, per unit time per second. Remember, time a uh, second is the unit of time. Number of complete pulses per second. So, in other words, what this says to us is that once you have, um, let's say, two pulses for every uh, uh, second, it means then uh, our frequency is two pulses per second. Now, now, if you talk about frequency in this case, so in other words, you say F, uh, that's the symbol that we use, is equals to number of pulses, okay, per, oh, number of pulses, okay, number of pulses, okay, um, over, okay, number of pulses, okay, over time taken to complete those pulses. So in other words, the unit is per second, per second, because number has no units. Now, per second, in other words, uh, it means that uh, a unit time, how many complete pulses have we uh, uh, propagated from the source? Remember, the disturbance must start from somewhere. So often we would refer to that as a source. Now, per second, it means if we have one, for example, pulse per second, it means our frequency is one hertz. So the hertz is the SI unit of what? Of frequency. We shall keep that in mind. Moving right along, uh, let's look at period. You know, uh, more often than once, we talk of, uh, it's, now it's the period for science. 
Now, if you talk about period of, for science, it's, it, it has to, a lot to do with time. So when we talk about period, we're talking about time. But time for what? In this context, we're considering uh, how, how long exactly does it take to generate a complete pulse. In this case, I uh, would say period would then be, for that reason, um, time taken. Time taken. Uh, time taken to complete a single pulse. I think this is one other uh, concept that we dealt with uh, before. So the time taken to complete a single pulse, um, a pulse could be a vibration, um, a, an oscillation, a, 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 a single disturbance. However, it should be complete. So the time is always measured uh, in seconds. That's our SI unit. So period, the symbol is T. And remember, T suggests something about time. Of, of course, that's the, 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 the first letter of, 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 of the quantity, which is time. So in other words, I want us to, to be very careful because the difference between frequency and a period is that frequency is to do with the number of pulses in a given time, whereas um, when you talk about period, you're talking about the time that's taken to complete a single vibration, oscillation, or a disturbance in a medium. Right. Okay. Moving right along, let's look at the, the next term, which is uh, where, uh, in phase. In phase. Uh, we briefly touched on this uh, term, phase. In phase, out of phase, um, uh, in our previous session, but we didn't delve much into detail. Now, let's consider a, a typical example where we have a repeated uh, a disturbance that occurs in space. Uh, let's say that disturbance, because we're already familiar with what a transverse wave is. Let's look at the disturbance which has to do with um, a, a transverse pass. Say, for example, you have um, that. That's the starting point of the disturbance. That's one complete oscillation, another oscillation, right? Now, if you look at it, we have got uh, different components, which are your crest, which we discussed in the previous lesson, and your trough. And then another crest, uh, and then another trough. Now, when we talk about two points that in, are in phase, if you look at the, the, the first point, let's call this A, for example, and then this is B, uh, this is C, let's say this is D. Okay, right. If you look at A, the particles at A are moving from A are moving downwards. And then the particles at C, they are moving also downwards. Now, if you look at these two points, they are consecutive. Consecutive, it means they're coming one after the other. So in other words, uh, if two points are in phase, it means uh, at that point, the particles move in the same direction. Because remember, it's a repeated cycle or a repeated uh, uh, disturbance that occurs in a medium. So for that reason, we will have point A, and C being in phase, whereas point B and point D are in phase. There are many points that we may consider. If you look, uh, let's say this is another point, it will be in phase with that other point, right? Okay, with that other point. So in phase, it, it's a certainly, it means to us that these, at these points, uh, the particles tend to move in the same direction. Hence, we say they are in phase. There's a very something interesting when we look at uh, uh, in phase and out of phase. Definitely, if two particles are not in phase, it certainly means to us that they are out of phase. Take, for example, if I may draw your attention back to the sketch. If you look at point A and point B, uh, they are out of phase in the sense that at A, the particles are moving downwards. And then from point B going uh, further, the, point, the particles are moving upwards, so they are moving in opposite or in different directions. It makes point A and B out of phase, right? Then the next term that I want us to look at very quickly is wavelength. Wavelength, we've looked at pulse length. Um, if you look at it, it would mean to us that um, exactly the length of one pulse, uh, which we shall repeat each and every uh, a period uh, represents the wavelength. So wavelength, the symbol is the Greek alphabet, lambda. So if you look at uh, the point that I've just uh, indicated on the sketch, that point and that point, they represent a single wavelength and the two points are in phase and consecutive. It means consecutive, it means successive. These two keywords shall be used interchangeably 
to refer to one and the same thing. So consecutive means one after the other. Consecutive, it means they must be adjacent. Nothing must separate them in terms of being in phase, right? Now, so uh, if I can draw back your attention to the sketch, um, wavelength, it represents um, the wavelength of this uh, sketch. In this case, it represents uh, the distance between two consecutive points that are in phase. The distance, distance, obviously, it's length, okay? in meters. So the distance between two consecutive points in phase in a wave, okay? Between two consecutive. Uh, remember, consecutive can be interused interchangeably with successive uh, adjacent, okay? To mean one and the same thing, right? The distance between two consecutive points um, in phase, right? So for now, I think uh, we're all good. Let's take a short break and go to a breather. Then we shall look at the key concepts that we shall be focusing on today. Join us later. Hi, guys. Uh, welcome back. Uh, now, our focus will be on the key concepts on transverse as well as longitudinal waves. Emphasis is on the waves. Right. Now, um, having looked at the what a pulse is, um, and I think it would be very proper for us to look at a, a, a quick demonstration of what uh, exactly a wave is and what exactly a transverse uh, uh, wave behaves in space or in a medium uh, when it is being propagated from a source uh, with the idea that we've already looked at um, the the transverse uh, pulse, which uh, had consisted of a single disturbance. Now we want to look at a case of what happens when there is a repeated successive or series of disturbance uh, in a medium. Right. Now, uh, our key questions or the ideas that I want us to uh, keep in mind as we go to the simulation is that uh, if you can look at the screen, it says, in which direction does the wave move? So direction of the wave is... Uh, what we, we, we want. Direction of the wave movement um, is what we want to establish at the end of the day. And then also, um, in which direction do the particles of the medium move? So there are two things um, in essence. Number one, uh, the direction of movement of particles and the direction of movement of the waves. So we want to establish as to exactly how they move relative to each other or compared to each other. Right. Let's go to our simulation uh, and take note of how particles behave as well as the wave, which is our emphasis as far as the transverse wave is concerned. Right. Okay. So with us now, we have a FET simulation. We've used it before. A uh, simulation uh, kind of models the behavior of uh, a wave in this case. So what I'm going to do, I'll use an oscillation, uh, which is going to repeat itself periodically. Because remember, now we are talking about the repeated movement. If you check, I'm going to play that. Uh, there is an up and down movement of the particles, as well as the movement of the waves. Uh, in this case, is from the left of the screen to the right, with a loose end there. So it's very important to ch check that uh, also. The disturbance is continuously being generated. Hence, we referred to the term a pulse, a series of pulses. So it's no longer a single pulse in this case. It's a repeated uh, disturbance that's being propagated uh, through the medium. Right. Now, I'll stop it there. If you check, the, the particles are moving up and down, right? Uh, obviously, you'd see the maximum point of disturbance there, which we refer to as the crest, the trough, uh, the crest. They are successive, successive, consecutive, meaning one after the other. Right. Okay. Just to go back uh, again, uh, the key things that we, we wanted to establish before we looked at the simulation was, number one, the movement of the particles or the medium itself in that uh, 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 simulation that we saw, and also how the wave moves. So relative to the wave, if you con compare it from the wave, the particles or those beads, we can think of them as the particles, they're moving up and down, up and down, yet the wave is moving on a horizontal plane. So if you look at the two now, um, you, you'd realize that the, the particles are moving up and down, yet the direction of motion of the wave uh, is horizontal or in that 
perpendicular plane. So as a result, we have a 90 degrees. So I think it answers our questions now in terms of in which direction does the wave move. The wave moves from left to right. That is direction of wave motion, okay? That's the direction of wave uh, movement, okay? And then the up and down in this case will be our, uh, the direction in which the particles or the medium, okay? okay? So that's medium mo uh, direction of movement of medium. Direction of mo movement of, of medium. Direction of medium, okay? It makes sense, right? So that's the direction of movement. So the repeated uh, disturbance in which the direction of the wave and the direction of the medium are perpendicular to each other, they constitute what we refer to as a transverse wave as we discussed it. So a transverse wave is a series of disturbances, a series of uh, uh, pulses or disturbances in which the direction of the, the movement of the particles or the medium is perpendicular to the direction of movement of the wave. We, that's what exactly our transverse wave is. Then uh, we have already looked at uh, a little bit of frequency, frequency, how often? Now, how often in this context would obviously refer to uh, how many complete pulses or oscillations do we generate in a given time? Remember, number of pulses and time, they make up our frequency, right? So in other words, frequency uh, has to do with, uh, it's F, okay, uh, is equals to number of pulses, remember it's a series of them. So we are concerned about how many of them are generated in a given time, right? Number of pulses, okay, uh, per unit time. And if you check, number of pulses per unit time, uh, we say it's the unit of frequency is hertz. Say, for example, if they are, let's say for argument's sake, there are 20 complete pulses that are generated in five seconds, then our frequency will be obviously um, without maybe with a calculator if you have to do that. So there is this 20, right, uh, divided by five seconds, the time which it took to complete the entire, uh, the, 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 the 20 pulses. Okay, so in, in, in this case, it says to us um, four uh, uh, um, pulses per second, right. Now, having said that, so in other words, it's four pulses, um, right, four pulses per second, which means it's exactly as, the same as four hertz, right. Okay, but then we also agree that when you talk about period, period is the time, right, period is the time, uh, and then frequency, that's our F, right. So. If you talk about uh, period, remember, it's the time that would take to generate uh, a complete pulse. So usually the confusion is both frequency and period, they involve time one way or the other. Now, if you look at period, it is the time that it takes to propagate or to generate a single or a complete pulse. So that is a, a seconds directly. Then when you look at frequency, it has to do with number of pulses per second. So time is one way uh, or the other uh, uh, involved in both quantities, frequency and period. Hence, it, it draws us to the fact that we can think of it and say, oh, it means there is a relationship that exists between frequency as well as period. How does that, uh, let's have a look, quickly have a look at that. Now, remember, frequency is per second. Now, in other words, we could say that uh, F, which is frequency, is equals to uh, one over period, which is time, right? Maybe just to clearly highlight that, okay, right, mm, that's four per second, okay? Then um, the relationship that exists between period and frequency is that one is the reciprocal of the other. Remember, uh, one over second in terms of the units, this is just the number of pulses per second, which is the period, uh, the time taken to complete a single one. So from our maths, uh, if you could maybe integrate, we'd realize that uh, it will be the same as one times second exponent minus one, okay? And one times second exponent mi minus one is exactly the hertz that we spoke about, the hertz. So one hertz is the same as saying uh, 
one complete pulse per second, right? So if I could repeat that, uh, if we say we've got one hertz, it simply means that we have completed a single vibration. Remember, in this case, it's a, a repeated cycle, but it means in every second we complete one pulse. That's, that's what it means when we say we have a frequency of one hertz. So it means that pulse, uh, in this case, if you look at the example that I used with the 20 oscill oscillations or 20 pulses in five seconds, and then we've got our solution to be four hertz per, uh, it's four hertz, which means it's four cycles per second. It means in every second, there are four complete uh, pulses that are generated, right? Okay, now let's look at the wave equation the wave equation. Remember, we have also looked at the equation V is equal to distance over time. This is what we already know in terms of uh, if a pulse covers a particular distance in a given time. We are in a position to, to determine how fast that pulse is moving. So remember, a, wave, a pulse speed is something that we did previously, but today we're looking at wave speed. They are directly related in the sense that both of them uh, involve the distance or the displacement. Uh, could you, I'll use the word distance for now uh, for us to know how much distance has been covered by a, a, a wave in a given time. Right. So obviously the distance will be meters as well as the time in seconds. Right. Uh, remember wave speed, this is what we already know from our previous session. So we are saying that uh, wave speed is in meters per second. Remember, this is the notation that we use. We must show the dot to show that uh, this is the product of a uh, distance and one over time, okay? If you can think of it that way. Right, now, uh, and it's in meters per second. To extend the page, right. Now, if we look at the wave equation, what does it say to us? It says um, V is equals to um, wavelength times frequency. Okay, wavelength times frequency. Remember, multiplication is associative. Whether we can start with the frequency and uh, or and end with the wavelength is still fine. But in most sources, it will be presented as um, V is equals to V is, is equal to um, frequency times wavelength. And remember, uh, this is our general wave equation that we shall be making use of in quite a lot of situations uh, as we go along in our very interesting section. Now, frequency is measured in hertz, okay? Right, so I'll, I'll just talk about the units now. Frequency is measured in hertz, that's hertz, right? which means per second, number of pulses per second, multiplied by uh, the wavelength, which is the distance between two consecutive points that are in phase. So consecutive, remember, one after the other. So wavelength, um, you can think of it as pulse length. We are repeating the same uh, 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 disturbance as a series, remember, or a successive or a repetition. Now, hertz, uh, it's, it's, it's for frequency, and then lambda, which, is, which represents wavelength, is measured in meters. But remember, we said that hertz is the same as per second multiplied by the wavelength, which is in meters. If you look at it, if we change the order, which is still fine uh, with the multiplication, uh, it will be meters per second, right? So that's the concept that I wanted to us to quickly look at. So when you look at uh, the wave speed, two things are very important. If you're given the distance and the time, you are in a position to determine how fast a, a wave is moving or how fast a pulse is moving, right? But then again, you can think of it in terms of uh, wavelength as well as a, 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 a frequency. However, sometimes you may also be given the period. Period can give you uh, from the relationship. If I can, we can quickly go back to that relationship, right? The relationship that exists between period and frequency is, ve is, ve is very, very, very key, the one that's uh, there, right? If we can rearrange that and make T the subject, uh, it will work out as follows. Remember, we said frequency is the same as one over period. Now, remember we said one over period, we can think of it as the reciprocal of period, okay? Now, if 
for argument's sake, um, we want to rearrange this, uh, what, what you'd call the subject of the formula. Uh, we multiply both sides by t, right? Multiply both sides by t. What we did on the left, we did on the right, okay? From your math background, I think we'll have um, t period, which is t, multiplied by f is equals to 1. If we divide by f both sides, what I did on the left, we did on the right, so it takes us to what? Uh, t is equals to 1 over f. So this is a very important relationship that exists between period and frequency by the virtue of the fact that both of them are connected to time. So the key ideas uh, that, uh, that we wanted to look at today is that um, when you look at um, period and frequency, both of them have time. However, uh, frequency has to do with uh, exactly how many passes we complete per second. And then when you look at uh, uh, period, it has to do with the time taken to complete a single pass. For now, I think we'll just take a short breather and then we come back and our focus will be on the longitudinal waves. There are a lot of similarities between uh, the, 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 the transverse wave and the longitudinal wave in the sense that both of them have to do with the repeated disturbance that takes place in a medium. Right, let's take a short breather, then we join each other after the break. Thank you. Hi guys, uh, welcome back after the short recess. I hope each and every one uh, had a well-deserved break uh, just to reflect on what we had discussed uh, uh, as far as the transverse waves are concerned. Now, next is uh, a brief focus on the longitudinal waves, uh, which is, uh, as I was indicated earlier on, there are a lot of uh, similarities between uh, the longitudinal and the transverse wave, and also there are some differences as well. Right, uh, if you come to think of it, uh, longitudinal waves are a bit different as far as uh, transverse wave, uh, wave uh, uh, consent. Now, now, if you look at a disturbance in which, say for argument's sake, uh, we generate a disturbance which will be propagated to, through space, right? Let's say we have uh, particles moving in that direction, right? right. Uh, what is going to cause this kind of um, a disturbance is that there is, uh, say, for argument's sake, uh, the back and forth movement uh, in terms of generating the disturbance. Back and forth, back and forth, as opposed to the one which was up and down, up and down in the, in the, in the transverse wave. But remember, this is also a wave. It means it consists of a repeated disturbance that is propagated through space. So it's a succession or a series of pulses, right? Now, obviously, because of that disturbance, what is going to happen? There will be segments in which um, particles will be closer together and where particles will be further apart, uh, alternating closer together, further apart, closer together. Right. Now, I want you to realize the two key questions that we have are in which direction does the wave move? Obviously, uh, let's say it moves from left to right. So we may think of this as the direction of the wave movement, okay? Direction of motion of wave. Direction of motion of wave, right? So the wave moves in that direction, right? Now, think of these as particles, uh, the, these horizontal lines that I've, 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 I've drawn uh, on our sketch. These, um, it represents the disturbance. So the disturbance is back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, okay? Back and forth, right? in this case. So if the disturbance is back and forth, it means uh, as far as in which direction do particles of the media move, they move uh, horizontally, right, in that way and in that way as well, as I've demonstrated. But again, if you look at the direction of motion of the wave is from, let's say, from point A uh, to point B, it's also in the same plane, same plane. So the direction of the wave and as well as the direction of the movement of the particles, we can think of them as being parallel to each other. Parallel, because uh, if this is the direction of motion of the wave, the particles will move in that direction as well as in that direction. So if you think of it um, geometrically or mathematically, these are parallel to each other, right? So the key word as far as a longitudinal wave is concerned is parallel, right? Now, there are, we can't talk of 
uh, crass and tough in this case. But now you'd realize that as a, a result of the repeated back and forth disturbance that is being propagated in space, we have got sections uh, which are uh, where the particles are closer together, which we call the compressions. Okay? These are called the compressions. So this is a compression. So I'll see, I'll see, you see there, this is a compression, and then this is a refraction. Refraction, I'll use R for that. Uh, the, one of the most common mistakes uh, when it comes to um, the, the difference between the components of a longitudinal wave is compression uh, and refraction. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the compression because when you compress, you mean you're bringing them closer together, right? So these particles, or think of the beads in the FET simulation, that way closer together. Then the, the word which is often, mis, uh, uh, there's a misconception around it, is refraction. It's a refraction. It's rare, which is uh, something which is uncommon. Then so most often they will say, uh, learners will say, fraction. No, no, no. As in uh, parts of a whole, no. It's rare. Fraction. Take note of that. Okay, so that's the spelling. If I can draw attention to it, so a compression is that region uh, in a longitudinal wave uh, where particles are closer together. So there is a compression, refraction, compression, uh, refraction, refraction, a compression. So if you you can check, uh, they are consecutive. It means one after the other. Come to think of it, these two are successive points in phase because they represent uh, particles where they are closer and the other one is also closed. We can think of this as the two consecutive points in phase. And then you, if you look at the refractions as well, these two points where particles are further apart is followed by, is alternating with a compression and then a refraction. Now, the key word that comes in when we talk about points in phase, uh, out of phase, uh, obviously is the wavelength. Okay, so in, in place of um, the crest and the trough, we talk about compressions and refractions. So if two compressions are consecutive, or it means they are successive, they are coming one after the other, that distance represents the, the wavelength. And then come to think of it, let's say uh, this is the point of zero disturbance. So this is only half the pulse, right? In the, the, the disturbance, if you come to think of it, if you can track the green, it goes, comes back, that's one, that's, that's half a, a disturbance then it means that it completes a single pulse. Now, there's back and forth the movement that we spoke about. So, the, from, if this is the rest position, it means this is the point to the maximum disturbance. It's like from rest position to crest. But in this case, we can't talk about crest. It's rest position to compression, right? Uh, it's the same as if this was the other uh, rest position, it means if the disturbance goes that way, it must come back, go the other way and come back, then we have made a, a complete pulse. And then a repeated succession of each one of those gives us uh, our, um, what we call the, the longitudinal wave. So those are some of the key differences between the two. Right, okay, moving right along, um, I just want us to look at a, a set of questions that uh, address uh, transverse and longitudinal waves uh, to get our understanding uh, in this section. Now, I'll draw your attention to the next question. We'll go through it together, guide each other, and then I'll give you time to do that so that we can do collective feedback and then we consolidate our section right. Okay. Now, if you look at the next question, it says, the following wave pattern is produced by a wave, right? It's a wave. It means repeated. Uh, 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 disturbances or pulses in a medium, it takes five seconds to complete one vibration, right? It takes five seconds to complete one vibration. Take note of that. These are the key terms in our, uh, our context of the problem. Now, if I can go a step further and draw your attention to the diagram, it says this is the direction of the wave motion, right? Um, and then if you look at it again, it says, uh, it means it moves from A to B, take note of that, right? Then uh, it says here, uh, determine the frequency of the wave, the period of this wave, the amplitude, the wavelength. Obviously, you would need to draw your attention to the diagram so that you, can, uh, you also take note of the necessary detail. That's going to guide us in terms of responding. Remember the key ideas that we discussed, the terminology, always refer back to that in your attempt. I'll give you exactly uh, three minutes to attempt that problem, then we shall do the feedback. Right, let's get on to it. All the best, guys.
Welcome, guys. Uh, hopefully, you made your attempt on the questions that I gave to you. Uh, now, let's quickly have a look at them uh, one after the other and see how we did on that. Right. Okay. The first question had to do with um, determining the frequency okay, of the wave. Remember, when we talk about the frequency, it has to do with number of pulses that are generated per second. Now, uh, come to think of it, if I can draw back your attention, uh, it takes five seconds to complete one vibration, right? Five seconds to complete one vibration. And what do we know already about frequency? We know that F is equals to one over T. Now, it's already given, if you can uh, look at it this way, um, if it takes five seconds to complete one vibration, it means, uh, in this case, we've got how many complete vibration? One, okay, two, three and a half. So in terms of frequency, that uh, five seconds is the period. So it means, um, if you look at it, it says here, five seconds to complete one vibration, right five seconds to complete one vibration. So one vibration takes five seconds, right? It means one over five, which means if you can go to our calculator quickly, it's very important, right? Um, it's, it, it's one uh, divided by five, okay? It gives us what? One over five, we can change that to a decimal fraction. Uh, then it gives us 0 0.2 hertz, which is 0 uh, 0.2 two hertz, right, that's our frequency. It means um, per second, uh, there's 0 0.2 of the, the three, pal three and a half pulses that was generated, okay. Right, if you look at the period, period is already given because it takes five seconds to complete one pulse. So it means period T is equals to five seconds. This, this one was rather direct. It was part of the, the problem that was given to guide us to get frequency, right? Or if you like, you, we can use the frequency that you got and say um, period is equals to 1 over 0, 0,2. Obviously, it will give us back the 5 that we spoke about. So that's the 5 seconds, okay? Right. Then um, the amplitude of this wave would need to go back to the diagram and study it carefully. The amplitude, it has to do with the distance from rest position to the crest, from rest position to the crest, or from rest position to the trough. Now, the five meters that is given is double because this distance is the same as that distance from rest position to crest, the same as from rest position to trough. Now, the five meters is double the amplitude. So if five meters, that relationship is very important. So our amplitude, in this case, um, is equals to, right, uh, five uh, meters uh, divided by two, right, which is equals to, two and a half, which is 2.5 meters. So that was also direct. It's very key to understand that the from crest to trough, from crest to trough is double the amplitude because amplitude has to do with the disturbance from the uh, rest position to the maximum up or down, right? In this case, also we must recognize that this is a typical what? Transverse wave, right? Transverse wave, okay, right. Okay, moving along. Um, the wavelength in meters, the wavelength in meters, oh, wavelength, two points that are in phase, obviously it has to do with this. If you look at the, the 300 millimeters, it's from, this is uh, only half a pulse, another half, and then another half. How many halves do we have here? In this case, we've got three of them. So only two of the three, they make um, exactly the, 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 the wavelength because that is our wavelength. You can think of that as the wavelength or alternatively, you can consider that. So two of the three portions makes up the wavelength, right? So if you check, uh, 300 millimeters is for the two and a half, is from the one and a half uh, wavelengths, okay? Right, so it means we have to divide that 300 millimeters, okay, by two. In this case, it will give us what? Uh, by three rather, because there are three halves, okay? It will give us exactly 100 millimeters, 100, okay, millimeters, right. But remember, the 100 millimeters is only half the wavelength. So if half, 100 millimeters half the wavelength, it means in this case, our wavelength is going to 100 millimeters times two, which gives us what? 200 millimeters. But remember, 
wavelength is length is measured in meters. We have to divide 200 by what? By 1,000, okay? If we go to our calculator very quickly, um, it will be uh, 200 uh, divided by 1,000, which gives us, um, okay, 1 over 5 is 0, 0,2 meters, right? So that's 0, 0,2 meters. That's our uh, wavelength, right? 0, 0,2 meters. That's our wavelength. Right, I just want us to quickly look at the next question, um, the last component of the question. Right, in this case, uh, it says uh, the distance uh, between two consecutive compressions in a longitudinal wave is 250 millimeters, uh, and the frequency of the source, okay, is 80 hertz. Right, I'll give you a chance to complete that, then um, you'll do the rest. Uh, so that you, have, you remember this question talks about period. It's, it's a repetition. We have done it in terms of our examples. I think uh, the key thing, when you go to the wave speed, you need to know whether you're given the frequency or in the wavelength or the distance and the, 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 the time taken to, for, to move by a, a wave or a pulse. So remember, distance uh, speed is meters per second. So I think we've done quite a lot uh, for today as far as uh, the concept of transverse wave and longitudinal waves are concerned. Uh, please do the remainder of the questions as uh, practice, then we shall meet again in our next segment. Uh, cheers and bye for now.